All right, it's time for our second online lesson, 14.5, Irrational versus Rational Numbers. Don't forget your headings. So the square root of 9 is 3. The square root of 16 is 4. Those are easy because those numbers inside there are perfect squares. We use perfect squares to estimate other square roots, like the square root of 11. Square root of 11 is between 3 and 4. The number 11 is just 2 away from 9, but 5 away from 16. So we're going to round the square root of 11 to the nearest 10. It's not, square root of 10 would be the one that's 3.1. Square root of 11 is going to be 3.2 or 3.3. .3. I'm going to guess 3.3. .3. Let's see how that goes. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. 3 times 3 is 9. Yeah, 3.3 .3 times 3.3 .3 is 10.89, which is almost 11. So the square root of 11 is almost 3.3. .3. It's approximately that. And we're going to be putting these on a number line today. So the square root of 11 would go right there. Now, the reason you had to do the square root of 11 as an estimate is because the answer is irrational. It's a decimal that goes on forever. All these numbers in red here are irrational, right? Pi, that's the symbol for pi, right next to it is the number for pi, is irrational. Any other numbers that go on forever without a repeating pattern are also irrational. The square roots that we don't know the answer to, they're also irrational. Everything else is called rational, the opposite. Irrational means not, all right, IR, the ball. Irrational means crazy. IR means not. So it means the opposite of rational. So fractions, scientific notation, repeating decimals are rational. Okay, Negative numbers are rational. Square roots you know the answer to are rational. So there are two types of real numbers, rational numbers and irrational. You're just going to find the irrational number in a group. So that's pretty easy. That's an irrational number. It goes on forever without a repeating pattern. There's another one. Pretty easy when you're comparing it to fractions or other decimals. But this one's a little trickier. This one over here is a repeating decimal. That's a rational number. The irrational numbers are the ones that don't end, they are non-terminating, and don't repeat. So they go on forever without a repeating pattern. So the one in the middle is the irrational number. The square roots we don't know the answer to are irrational. So the square root of 4 is 2, the square root of 25 is 5, the square root of 64 is 8, Square root of 5 is an irrational number that goes on forever. Same thing here. Square root of 9 is 3. Square root of 16 is 4. Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 50 is some irrational number that goes on forever, right? The square root of 49 is 7. So this is some decimal that starts with 7 and goes on forever. It's irrational. Notice this one next to it is a repeating decimal. That's a rational number. Irrational has to go on forever without a repeating pattern. The square root of 81 is just 9. Once again, 0.3 repeating is a repeating decimal. So you can't just look for the dots. Repeating decimals are rational. 0.242 is a terminating decimal. That's perfectly fine. It 
can be very, very long, but as long as it ends, it's rational. If you have an expression that has an irrational number in it, the whole thing is probably irrational. Now I could make a trick question where that's not true, but I'm not going to for you guys. So find the square root that's irrational, and that whole expression is probably irrational. Square root of four is two, this is two over two, which is one. Square root of nine is three, this is three over two, also known as one and a half. Square root of 36 is six, six divided by two is three. But this has the square root of five in it. You take a number that goes on forever, divide it by two, it still goes on forever. This is how we write multiplication with square root. So this is three times four, which is 12. This is three times seven, which is 21. This is three times 12, which is 36. And this one's irrational because the square root of seven is some irrational number that goes on forever and you multiply it by three, still gonna go on forever, still gonna be irrational. The most famous irrational number you know is pi. Now, you may have used 3.14 or 22 sevenths to calculate the area of a circle, but that's what we use instead of pi. Pi, this Greek symbol, spelled pi, and this number are irrational. The other two are rational. They're the ones you have to use to calculate things, such as the area or circumference of a circle. Pi on a number line right, is 3.14, so it's a little bit more than 3.1 and a little less than 3.2. So pi in a number line goes there. So the square root of 18 is between the square root of 16 and the square root of 25. It's between 4 and 5. 18 is pretty close to 16. And so we would say the square root of 18 is a little bit more than four. I think we might guess 4.2 because square root of 17, I would definitely guess 4.1. So let's guess 4.2 for the square root of 18. I don't know if that's the answer. I got 17.64, that's pretty close. So the square root of 18 is approximately 4.2. So we're gonna put the square root of 18 at approximately two spaces past four, 4.2, on the number line. That's the square root of 18 divided by two. Well, that actually is an irrational number that goes on forever. But we just said the square root of 18 was approximately 4.2. So 4.2 divided by two is approximately 2.1. So the square root of 18 divided by two would go to 2.1 approximately, right? Half of that other one. That's two times pi, so play. Take some estimate of pi, like 3.14, multiply it by two. That's not the exact answer of 2.2 times pi, but it, two times pi is approximately 6.28, which is a little bit more than 6.2. It's actually almost 6.3. Two pi minus one, would be 6.28 approximately, lining up our decimal points, and that would be approximately at 5.28. 5.28, a little bit more than 5.2, a little less than 5.3. That's where we put 2 pi minus 1. All right, our Easter egg for the day is the first answer to the test, which is going to be negative 11. So go ahead and do the practice problems. You should be pausing between each problem to give yourself time to do it.
6.6 is between 6.6 and 6.7. So that's where pi plus 3.5 would go on a number line. And you're all done for today. I will see you again tomorrow.